Streams in the Desert. Volume 1. By Elizabeth Kalman. July 25th. What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter, John 13 7. We have only a partial view here of God's dealings, his half-completed, half-developed plan, but all will stand out in fair and graceful proportions in the great finished temple of eternity. Go, in the reign of Israel's greatest king, to the heights of Lebanon. See that noble cedar, the pride of its compeers, an old wrestler with northern blasts. Summer loves to smile upon it night spangles its feathery foliage with dew drops, the birds nestle on its branches, the weary pilgrim or wandering shepherd reposes under its shadows from the midday heat or from the furious storm, but all at once it is marked out to fall. The aged denizen of the forest is doomed to succumb to the woodman's stroke. As we see the axe making its first gash on its gnarled trunk, then the noble limbs stripped of their branches, and at last the tree of God, as was its distinctive epithet coming with a crash to the ground, we exclaim against the wanton destruction, the demolition of this proud pillar in the temple of nature. We are tempted to cry with the prophet as if inviting the sympathy of every lowlier stem invoking inanimate things to resent the affront howl, fur, tree, for the cedar has fallen. But wait a little. Follow that gigantic trunk as the workmen of Hiram launch it down the mountainside, thence conveyed in rafts along the blue waters of the Mediterranean, and last of all, behold it set a glorious polished beam in the temple of God. As you see its destination, placed in the very holy of holies, in the diadem of the great king say, can you grudge that the crown of Lebanon was despoiled, in order that this jewel might have so noble a setting? That cedar stood as a stately prop in nature's sanctuary, but the glory of the latter house was greater than the glory of the former. How many of our souls are like these cedars of old? God's axes of trial have stripped and barred them. We see no reason for dealings so dark and mysterious, but he has a noble end and object in view, to set them as everlasting pillars and rafters in his heavenly Zion, to make them a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of our God. Macduff. I do not ask my cross to understand. My way to see. Better in darkness just to feel thy hand. And follow thee.